Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Well, welcome, Sylvia Golan, to our We Choose to Thrive series. We're so delighted that you chose to be with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Sylvia, would you mind to share a little bit of your backstory? Well, um, I am a survivor of child sexual abuse and rape. A little bit about me. I was born in another country. I was born in Guatemala. Came to the United States when I was in elementary school, maybe about first or second grade. And um, the abuse um, happened in my home country in Guatemala with um, a, uh, a family member. It was a cousin. He was, you know, a few years older than I was. Um, the abuse was finally over when I kind of migrated into the United States. Well, I know in reading your story, the abuse pretty much ended for, for several years. And then as you got into your teenage years is when it re, it would, the attempt was to restart. But yes. When it came to a head. Yes, yes. You know, being Hispanic, I guess I can tell you a little bit about how it kind of started and how I was, you know, he was kind of prepping me to, you know, he kind of picked me out. I come from a a large family. Hispanic families normally live in clusters. My mom is one of 21 children, so there was multiple children that lived under one household. Yeah, a lot of cousins, a lot of aunts and uncles. So I did have um, a cousin that um, kind of pick me out. That's how I like to call it. He was really nice to me, very charismatic. And I remember being really young and he would always want me to go to the grocery store with him, things of that nature. Um, My mom and dad lived with us, but my father came to the United States. So my mom stayed back in our home country. And at the time there was six siblings and I'm number two of seven total. My youngest brother was the only one born here in the United States. So when we were in Guatemala, that cousin, um, he was kind of like a single child because his parents didn't live in the household. So he kind of um, was raised with all of the aunts and uncles. He never felt like he had a place. The older I get and the more I share my story and even within my family, I guess there's a lot of abuse that actually happened in my family that they try not to talk about too much. So I guess for me, the thriving purpose of me talking about it is to, to share my story, to tell people that it's not okay for things like this to happen in our families and being able to be the voice for hopefully generations of you know, other children that, that hopefully won't, won't be abused for the same reasons. I'm so proud of you because it is typical that it does run in families and then especially I would imagine in a, a situation like that where it's a cluster of all ages and everything, there's a lot of chances where the, the parent doesn't doesn't realize they need to monitor so closely. Think- and you, yeah, you said it right there. There's a lot of opportunity. There really is. And having um, young teenage boys watch a lot of you know young cousins. There's just too much opportunity there that shouldn't be. So I think even when when my cousin started abusing me, I, I call it rape. Like the first time he ever did anything to me, it was very uncomfortable. I call it rape because I was so young. I didn't know what was going on, and he did. He took full advantage of me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember after the first time it happened, like I shared with you, my father lived in um, California at the time. The rest of us were figuring out a way to come to the United States. And being, I think I was about, I don't know, six or seven years old at the time before we moved out here. And that young, you're very gullible. You believe your older cousins. You believe your older siblings. And when your cousin says, if you say anything, your father's never going to come back and, you know, take, come pick up the rest of, of you guys to bring back to the United States, you believe those stories. So, yeah, as I, yeah, yeah. As I get older, I realize, God, there's so, there's so many things I could have done, we should have done. There's so much prevention that could have happened. I agree. But, you know, we go through life and, and um, I like to ask people, you know, well, have you thought about the beautiful qualities that you have because you've come through that and you have the awareness? You know, so where are you now in your healing journey? 
Um, I think that having a conversation with you and not completely breaking down and crying, I guess that's, that's where I'm at in my, in my story. I think I've shared my story so many times. Um, darkness to light was probably one of the, of the biggest like therapeutical parts for me to be able to heal. Um, I think, uh, it, I mean, it goes day to day. There's days that are better than others. And um, I feel like uh, hopefully I'm strong enough and I've got that voice. I have a very supportive family. Uh, supportive work group. Um, my husband is is a huge. He's been my rock through this whole thing, and I honestly feel like without him, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Thank goodness for good husbands, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, did you you tapped into darkness to light? Were there any other res, um, resources you tapped into that helped you uh, that you could recommend to somebody else? Having support groups, like when you. There, you know, that face. It's a, there's private Facebook groups where women kind of go in there and they're having a bad day. They just need like a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of prayer. Uh, support groups, like online support groups, because there's people all over mm -hmm. the United mm -hmm. States or all over the world that are probably battling or going through some of the same situations. Um, if you um, have a faith that you follow, if you have any church groups, women's Bible studies, things of that nature, have also been um, very good for me personally. Um, having a very well-balanced life, not only having a good, um, if you're in a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, quality relationships, good support groups, friends, good family conversations, like if you're a very well-rounded person, it really does help with the healing process. It really does. And and also the, having that conversation with the ones that are closest with us so that they understand maybe some of the things that we have gone through, you know, yeah. learning to value ourselves. Were there any books or um, you know things that you read, anything you read that was helpful for you? you know, there's a book that I'm – probably read it about 50 times and I should know the name of the title it's about a woman and it's a very famous author and I think I saw it on the Oprah show one time and she mentioned it and I went out and I got it and it's about a woman that has that was she um, she was abused but she had a lot of uh, substance abuse issues it was it's, it was a whole bunch of different stories but it's that same woman and, and it's like a true story about her biography and how she kind of got through it and, and it's it, for me it's a great book for me to read well that's been the whole the whole thing behind this is because the more of us that speak up the more awareness that there is mm -hmm. and it's those kind of resources that really give us the strength to know that we weren't the only ones we're not alone so what would you say to somebody that is just beginning to realize in their life that they haven't been happy that they have undergone this thing uh, we we all acknowledge that once we've gone through these things, sometimes we're our own worst enemy because we don't have the self-worth that we need, and we should make a lot of choices for ourselves that maybe we wouldn't have chosen otherwise. What would you say to somebody that was just starting down this journey of knowing that they wanted to do something to change it? What would you say? Well, I think people are very uncomfortable when they're vulnerable. People don't like feeling vulnerable. But it's okay. I guess that that's one of the biggest things for me. Um, I've always been, you know, very hard-headed. I wanted to do things on my own. I don't need people to feel sorry for me. I don't want people to do things for me. But I think one of the biggest things was for me to humble myself enough to feel vulnerable because it is okay to to deal with the situation. Find, everybody needs a person, whether it's a girlfriend, a sister, a brother, somebody that you can trust and you can talk to. The first thing is admitting that something happened to you and it wasn't okay and not feeling shameful or feeling blame for what happened to you because I think a lot of people try to make excuses on why the situation happened, why we sweep it under the rug, why we don't like to talk about it. So I think admitting to it at first and becoming that vulnerable person that's going to make you really uncomfortable is going to be the number one step to get you through the healing process. It certainly is. And, it, you know, I... I kept mine quiet, and I published my book about it into, on my 60th birthday. Wow. And my life has totally changed just since yeah. I've done that. And that is the message that, you know, the message that you need to stand up, you need to speak up, find your truth. What is your truth? And find your inner, inner strength, your inner power, and live with that beauty, the beauty of who you really are.
it, I saw a graphic one time. It was a lady wearing sunglasses, and the sunglasses were painted, and it says, the shame that they do not know and the shame that they do not see. Mm. And it, it just really struck me as something that really fits the, with the way most of us feel. We have that shame. We don't want to talk about it because it's, we feel like maybe we did something wrong. You know, yeah. even if it, yeah. if it started when we were little tiny children, we have that shame that's associated around it. And it's now as whatever phase we are in life, whatever age we are, the younger you are, the better it is when you, you seek to overcome it. But no matter what the age you are, it's standing up for yourself and, and making it known and doing something to start the healing process is what's, what makes all the difference. I agree. I think it's probably the hardest part is taking that that leap, taking that. And you're right. I feel like if somebody would have, maybe if people would have asked me the right questions when I was younger, why there were certain people or that cousin that I really didn't want to be around. Like there was all of these flags that I, you know, hopefully now with this video that you're making, your book that you're making, educating our community, you know, ask those questions. And you're right. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years old and sharing your story or 100 years old and sharing your story. Um, even if it's the first time you've ever shared it, it's, God, it's so powerful for you to be able to kind of step off that and just, you know, it, set it empowers yourself, you. yeah, And yeah. set yourself free is mm -hmm. basically what it is. Well, thank you so much for sharing, taking the time to talk with us today. We, we honor you for, for having that courage, and it's such a beautiful thing that, um, together, our voices are rising to show that there is a way. And hopefully, the biggest thing is not only the awareness that people can heal, but maybe the awareness also that we watch, we, we, we pay attention to what's happening in our families and watch for those telltale signs. And we can help, we can help stem the tide, you know. Exactly. And making sure that there's no room for those kind of experiences in other people's lives. Okay. And that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Sylvia, for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Have a wonderful day and good luck on this journey. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also, check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.